All right, let's it go for 10 good, minutes. Bro. Huh? It smells good, though. Thank you, man. Oh, mash up, bruv. I need to learn to sleep. I don't know what's going on. I was going to get to that because I see, I actually saw you say on on Twitter that you find it difficult to sleep. Bro. And we just want to throw in there, don't want to put out personal business and that, but sometimes per being in the, in the in the group a little late. <laughs> you being there a little late. Bro, you being in the man. group a little late. A little I, bit wide awake. Too what's going late. on? I don't know. Are you all right? I mean, I hope so, Giza. <laughs> I definitely know that living by yourself was finding. We had that conversation last week, but then this I got past air fryer, week, by the way. Huh? I got air fryer, by the way. You got air fryer? <laughs> yeah. What's he saying? It's all right still. <laughs> <laughs> I've only put one thing in it though, but it's all right. It's, it's all right still. Don't need to preheat nothing. You just fling the thing in there. Bam. How long? But I put a. I put a. Um, sorry, we'll get back to you in a moment. Yeah, of course. I put a. Um, what do you call it? A sweet potato pie in the air fryer. Big man. This thing started cooking it immediately. <laughs> I'm telling you, like, not a thing of, you pull it in, and it obviously sometimes you might have to make the, the oven, you know what I mean? The temperature has to be hot already. Bro, you put this thing in here, one minute and 30 seconds, you can start smelling it. You're like, hold on a minute. <laughs> Wait, is this gonna bun up my thing? Cause it's supposed to be in there for 25 minutes and I can, it smells ready already. Drink response. Strongly. Quick. Yes. Quick, quick. I like that. I like rapid yeah? response. Taylor made. Taylor made. My charge you. I honestly believe that I need to get air fryer now. So how long did you have to put it in there for though? 20, well, it said on the packet 25 minutes. I did 20, checked it and it looked good. I thought, let me give it another five minutes. And then it was a little bit toasty, but so it was ready though. It was ready? Yeah, it was ready. It's still alive. Yeah, strongly. Come on my brother. My so G. It must have done its thing properly. <laughs> I need to get an air fryer, I'll fry this air. Cause the microwave thing I'll stop using. Right. Um, but yeah, the sleep thing, I don't get it, Chucky. I don't know what's going on. I attempt to sleep and next you know I'm writing ideas until like 3 30, 4 o'clock in the morning. Oh, so it's not a, it's not necessarily a thing of unproductivity. Like no, no, still... no, 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 no. No, 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 no. You're you're doing stuff still. Yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Thinking or... It's vibra season for me, man. That's I've, I've been focusing so much on ideas and stuff like that. It's like my brain is just too, over the past two, three weeks, it's just too active. It's just active and it just wants to, and then I think I've just got to write it down and then try, bro. But now it's messing up just normal average days. I'm waking yeah. up it's eight o'clock, getting a cab in Sweden. Eight in the morning? Or oh, seven o'clock this morning. To go what to do what? Get a cab for someone in Sweden. Oh gosh, okay, one of them ones. Come on, my brother. So then, yeah, the whole yeah, my whole thing's a mess right now. But if you are in the creative space, I think you might be able to you understand. relate, yeah, like yeah, your yeah. cousin. You know what I'm saying? But if you're not, then I just look like a mess to you. Also, shout out Lacoste. I was meant to be at the event yesterday, but I fell asleep. Genuinely, I'm, I'm a mess. I'm oh, a mess that's right mad. now. But this jacket right here. Is what, what time was shout the event? Six p.m. Oh god, this is a mess. <laughs> Chuck, there's something wrong with me. There is something wrong, but at least I'm honest. Yeah, no, nah, there's nothing wrong, you know. I think maybe your brain, like you're just, you're, there's a lot going on in your mind and then when oh. you rest, you rest and when you're back up again then it's just, this is a lot going on and you can't regulate the times properly. Let me show you how I fell asleep. Going to the Converse, no, Converse, Ross, Lacoste, sorry. Lacoste event. This is my bed. I got dressed, I sat down, I woke up like this. Oh no, yes. <laughs> That's happened to me. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you wake up like that and then you just go, yeah, I've got everything's in the pocket. The phone call from the Uber man, he's just phoning me. Yeah. He's cancelled. I'm looking at my phone. People are ringing you. Don't it's 10.30. You've got half an hour to make it. At least one time a year, I fall asleep through everything. At oh. least one time a year. It doesn't happen any more than, I'd say, two or three. Three max. It's not good, man. But but at least once I fall asleep. Through. The one thing I always remember, yeah, is some years ago I had a, I was I had to play at a wedding. No, I had to go to a wedding early in the morning, yeah. yeah. But I had something to do the night before. I had a wedding to go to anyway. But see, afterwards I left the wedding because I had. This is when I was on my local DJ hustle, Come and on. I'm doing what four. I was doing like three, four bookings in one night, driving from here, going there, whatever, yeah. Bro, I go home, have a shower. Yeah. Yeah. I had the, the towel around me and like, I do this thing where I'd be kneeling on the floor and I'd just like <laughs> lean on my bed like that. Like in a really awkward position. Sometimes I'll just do it. Everyone know, be like, doing weird stuff like this. Someone's got their, their own weird things, but carry on. Brother, I open my eyes. It was three o'clock in the morning. Bro, 
three, it was dark. I was just in the room, bro. And I missed everything. I missed all my bookings. How the promoters how? was ringing me and all that type of stuff. And like, obviously they was a little pissed because they're like, right, Chuck Chucks ain't turned up. But I'm pissed because I've missed out on the little bread and them times that I'm starving. <laughs> <laughs> I'm starving. The whole bitch would have warmed the stomach, you know? blood. I had what? I think oh. it was either three or four and I missed all of them. Do you know what, yeah? Maybe when you got a lot on your mind, your head's just heavy. Maybe it just gets tired. It's a bit. And then your next, you know, you're just waking up with your towel on. Bookings. Yeah. Not attended to. Well, part of my tiredness is how much I'm thinking. Brother, I swear down, it's a it's a real thing. When I think a lot, brother, I'm just exhausted. Yeah, part, a part of my tiredness is like, I will literally be at home thinking and then I'm shattered. But, <laughs> a man's sweating now. Man's really? out of breath. I'm absolutely shattered, bro. You know what? If you know about that type of... You've been in the trenches, man. When like, you're thinking so much, you're knackered. Yeah, man, you've been in the trenches, man. You know the pain. But um, the Vibber thing, quickly. Let's just go with that. We yeah. need to repost that. What's going on with that? What's so, the date? Fling that in. We are doing an event on the 2nd of May. Um, we're inviting 30 people. But obviously, when you do oh. events over there, like you can't really... It's got to be a member. So um, if you're a member of Shoreditch House, man, or the houses, pull up, man. It's going to be a vibe. Like, proper, proper vibe. Local DJs running rhythms, bit of music, couple familiar faces, couple unfamiliar faces. Strongly. And the most important thing is the vibe is strong. Absolutely. So that's the most important thing is gonna be, you know, it's gonna be on a second. I won't name what house it's gonna be in. Yeah. Because no. if you're a member, just go on. You You'll know. know. Go on the app. They I think there's an app that they use, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think I'm... they got a dating app as well. Have they got a dating app? Man? What? I think so. Or maybe I'm going wrong. I'm uh, maybe I'm going mad, but I'm sure they got a dating app. Do you know what, Chucky? I was thinking about dating, you know, Chucky. I sent something to you. Like, Is you know? it? I was thinking about dating. Not me dating. Oh. We don't date. But I was thinking about... Would you not ever experiment on an app? Nah. And just go, and just give it a go? Nah. Why? What's happening, Giza? <laughs> <laughs> hey, EA, you see my swag. I can just be upstairs. Well, I'm babe, you look good no, today, you know, and I'm with vibes strong. I don't need that no, app. Okay, hear what I'm saying. No, I get it. That's and to I'm, replace the bro, confidence you I'm don't... Get, I, you know 100% it's not for you. Yeah, but... Here's the one thing that I will say, yeah. Got you. Is that maybe it would introduce you to somebody you wouldn't even see. I agree. That's a good point. Do you get what I'm saying? But maybe you I'm encounter a woman yeah. that isn't within, she's not even within our world, but she's still in our world, but you just wouldn't see her. I don't know though, man, because I'm outside. I see a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and I see what I want to see. But you're right. There's a big, there's a strong possibility that I catch something that, is a bit left of field. But you know what? Just that the date... And this is no disrespect to date people on dating apps, but all the disrespect to people on dating apps. I just think you're a bit desperate, man. Like, lad. Like, do you know the process of like, all right, I'm going to get this app. I'm going to sign up, put my details... In. Just to find someone. No, you are. That's no, unfair. That's unfair. Of course it's unfair. <laughs> it's but unfair. we're here. I just think you lot are desperate. <laughs> A hundred, bro, bro. Look at him. No, look pause him. it. No, no, no. He makes me sit. No, I think about it. Look no, at no, no, no. Yeah. Big poet, you know, outside can what? be around Gallant. No, Nelson Mandela look at him. swag today. Look, look at him. Mandela look at this swag. guy. You make it's me not sick. That. No, it's just that, my lad, like, man them. Like, bro, not everyone is poet. Not everyone is you. But you're not meant to be me. You're meant to be you, baby girl. <laughs> I was going to say baby boy, but that is crazy. <laughs> Nah, but so you are going to be you, man. Like, we've, we've gone over this before, though. But we have, yeah, gonna, we have, yeah, yeah. But we I have. will say that, like, sometimes some people just like, like one of my good friends, for example, which I've used him as an example. Yeah. In his day to day, he don't see women what because of the line of work that he does. So he works in a heavily dominated, a male heavily dominated field. Yeah. He doesn't like his week to week and even weekends doesn't really encounter women. And going out isn't the same as it was before. Back in the day, when we used to say, Monday you could go here, Tuesday you could go here, there was always a place you could go. Yeah. Sometimes when people come to this country now, it must be the same for you. Sometimes yeah. when people come to this country, they're like, yo, what's going on tonight? You're scrambling. What's that? Has Chuck's got a dance? No, Chuck's ain't got a dance on tonight. It's faded on. No, faded ain't, ain't on. Vibra ain't got nothing going on. Where do you go? You got pretend you're you're a Well, you just stand in Shoreditch. Pretend you're a doctor. <laughs> What, what, wear outfit? No, man, you have to get some patience. Strongly. Because eventually you will find the place that you need to be in. Why have you got a rush? 
You know Chris Tucker, he ain't got an hour. Big man, just find some time to chill out, do something else, and guess what? Boom, R&B come frequent these days. Go look at R&B. Nah, man. You catch little vibes over there, next thing you know, someone goes, you know what? I like your vibe, you know, you should come to this. Next thing you know, then you're in the little raving, see? Then you might find your thing. And if I'm being totally honest with you people, you won't find your wife in the raving scene anyway. Strong so man. don't worry about that, man. Just socialise, have confidence. I know look, this at is him, a, look at him. It's you can you. do it, people. It's I believe in everyone. You, you know? I believe in everyone. I believe everyone can do it. I just feel like the moment you go, here's some convenience, you just eradicate the thought that you could even take the process in the first place. No, 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 no. Throw no, away the microwave. No, no, Get no, no, the no. air fryer. No. 25 no. minutes. What, it, what happens is, is that sometimes, <laughs> if anything, people become a little bit too uh, comfortable texting. Mm. That's the issue. Mm. App isn't the issue. The issue is being able to, once we get past the texting on the app, yeah. is how we now converse when we see each other. And sometimes, again, look, let's let's go to the person who is not as privileged as us here. Yeah. Now, boom, you finally get a date. You finally get one. But remember, this is a man who's had a bunch of knockbacks now. So now, you're going to this date, certain men are going there, and I could understand why they might overcompensate. Or they they might Hundreds. do too much, or they Hundreds. because it's like they've got an opportunity and they don't want it to go now, so they're doing too much now. So you've lost a lot of it. So it's like really and truly, I don't think it's the app. It's just the being able. To, it's having the skill to be able to be in front of somebody and have a conversation with them and have a good time. All right, so let me show you, Mike, because I've been at it since MSN. I've been nudging. I don't know if some of you don't know nudging. about that, but I've been nudging. Jeez. So I hear what I'm saying, my people. Nudging. I had a, cu- a couple of my brethren on MSN. I would go on their MSN. My brother is China. There is so much people in this thing mm. and they're mad sociable. Mm. But when they shut off that laptop and we grow up in our real life, can't them can't it. talk they to can't nobody. So I started asking myself this question. Just as a young person, what type of approach looks better? And I may not be able to know what to say online. He knows the right things to say online at times that are triggering conversations. He knows how to make the, mm. you know, people would put the heart and then you put the name and then the next heart. He knew all of the right songs to listen to and put in the back. He knew all of that. All them techniques I don't know, but fling me in a real life. I yeah, swim. That's thing. Fling me in a real life. Yeah. And I just think the moment you're able to adapt and converse and flex in a real life, everything's easy. If you can just operate for that two hours that you decided to switch on MSN, personally for me, I just think you're doing yourself a disservice. Real life first, then online. If you're just online, when it comes to real life, you're that person you said that's doing the most to keep that gal. That gal now, she's had seven dates this week. It's Tuesday. <laughs> yes, Bob, tell you it's Tuesday. This is your first date in seven months. <laughs> what are we doing? But it was, yeah, but also adding to the fact that firstly, you've got to find a space. You gotta find the space. That's where, so true. Is, where are they anyway? That's true. And then the other part of it is, it, bro. I'm not gonna lie, bro. It's hard for the man, then, man. So I'll be honest hard, with you. man. It's hard. It is hard. It's hard, and I understand why. I understand why there's a confidence issue element with the approaching and whatever. But I just say, you know what? Once you do get there, you just gotta fake it until you make it. I'm with it. If you are nervous, you gotta pretend like you're not nervous. I'm now, with it. Let me it. tell you something. I've done it. Enough times Chat to when them, I've gone and sat down with a girl or whatever it is, I'm a bit nerd. Like, I'm, and and sometimes I'll be on. I keep it all the way real, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes if I'm going to meet a girl, yeah, and she already has an understanding of what it is of what I do yeah. and what's going on in my life and how lit certain things are and this yeah. on the floor, because obviously it's Chucky online. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what a to Chucky online. Come on, man. But there's an expectation now. <laughs> there's an expectation that I'm gonna be a certain type of way. Right. But I might not be, I might not feel like that. There's so many yeah, different dimensions to who I am. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. So when I come and I'm chilling with you, I might not be so feeling so extra. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Vibrant all and things. all that. I might be on a chill I'm one on today. A, I'm on a retrospective, look, wine drinking vibe. And we want to just have a little deep dive today about something else or the other and have a little, f- and that might be a bit of me, but there's an expectation that, oh, like I'm going to go and meet this so we have it, we all get, but you have to just put, you have to park that aside and then just try and find some source from somewhere. And if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. You just go again. See, my experience of like, again, going back into real life. One time me and Chucks were out and about and we've just gone into a, 
a local lab Brook Grove, you know how it is. Me and Chucks want to get a little food from a burger joint. Remember. I see this one girl, she looked crazy. I said, you know what? We're chatting. That's my G. Yeah, I know. Now, the next time we met up, we knew where we're meeting each other energy wise because we met in real life. So we're meeting each other at the same energy as last. Yo, last time was crazy, remember? And we're feeding off the energy of last time. Now, I've met someone offline, online, sorry, and then met them in real life. The energy I had was, it was 12.30, medical was going on. Mm. I was a bit chill. There was no real energy, there was nothing. So now I'm having to try and create a synergy and an energy of the conversation that was nice, but it wasn't, I didn't feel anything like that when it was, when we were in the, yeah. you get me? So I always advise real life. It's like watching football at home and then being at the game. Yeah, this is a it's different, a whole, different thing. You can't be a football fan from just watching, uh, you can, but I'm telling you, if someone goes, oh, I don't like football, if you don't understand it, big of me, big man, come with me to Real Madrid. Come with me to Real Madrid. <laughs> Let's go watch it. But VIP, hey, but it shout it, out Jude Bellingham. This is the My thing brother. though, yeah. What, what happened that day, you did something I would never do. Which is, and that is the difference between how we approach certain things. Yeah. So your approach is amazing, but I don't have that. In but me. yes, you do. This is what you've done that's wrong because I didn't come out the womb and just start chatting to Gan. No, I was did. crying. <laughs> <laughs> Big man, the girl walked past. Let's be clear. Let's paint this picture properly. The girl walked past. She was crazy. And then Poet just, I don't know, he just gets up and he's off. <laughs> and the next minute she's just sitting with us yeah. and we're just holding the vibes. But that is his G now and it, that, you get what I'm saying? But if that was left to me, that wouldn't have worked like that at all. But you've now seen the information. Listen, there's loads of things I'm not aware I'm of. I'm still not doing that. Yeah, but you're not doing it, but the information's there. You saw a technique that you could try and say, yo, what's my version of that? I must can do that. Why can Poet just do it? Why can Poet? <laughs> I must can do that. I must can do that. That's a proper yard man thing, innit? I must can do that. So I just feel like, cause that's how I learned. When I was younger, big facts, I saw my bridges drawing girls and I saw how much they didn't care. Like they, everyone made a big deal about things. And they used to go, my boy, she's gonna say yes, she's gonna say no. I have all the information already, I don't care. And they used to go for it to the point where we started getting experimental. My first year of college, I'm drawing gal in a Cartman voice. What? Yeah, like South Park. Hey, what's going on, gal? You, I'm like, get, get, you look so good today, my gal. See, only you can pull some shit off because like that. It just... If I go and do some shit like that, they are going to look at me like, what the fuck is this guy on? I was 17 though, like, you should not take it too okay, seriously, cool. you know what I'm saying? But, but even now, like, I just, I honestly, that sort of, one thing that's difficult as well, back in the day, yeah, everything looked the way it, were, it actually was. The bad man looked like bad man, you knew they were bad man, you left them alone. The man them that play football look like footballers, look all baggy, tracksuit, like they're kicking ball every day, these times it's just Sunday and they're going to church, but you hold your little wash bag and play football. Like everyone looked the role they're meant to. Now, cause there's so much information on Instagram, people are looking at roles and saying, I like that swag. And they're dressing to a role that they don't usually play. So there's a lot of girl, Dr Drizzy Drake. There's a lot of gal that look like the stush, snobbish bad gal. But when you chat to them, I they're not, cool. Yeah. But they've just taken that image 100%. and they've, cause it looks nice. And they said, I want to dress like that, but not understanding the, the stereotypical non-thought processed implications it might hold to someone like myself that might go you look like this type of type of female i think you're that so then it strikes fear into some guys but my whole thing is forget all of that now all the image thing is all blurred like bad man don't even look like bad man sometimes they look like a really nice guy until you get into the wrong side so nothing is work the way things look nowadays are not really what they are yeah, yeah. so just walk up to her Walk up to her and say, hello, how's your day? And don't walk up with expectation that you should get something. Exactly just walk up to her like and just have a vibe. Like and if that. there is no vibe, met, then it just wasn't meant to be. I and like don't that. hold ego towards it because you don't know her. She don't know you. There's actually more to gain. You've lost nothing. Hundred. You didn't even know her beforehand. Hundred. So then you've lost nothing. So when I have that mentality, when I see the girl, I'm just like, baby girl, today you look good. Have a good day. And I'm off. Mm. And if anything else, I maybe have made her day a little bit better. 100%. Come on, man. See, this e is the thing. Sports, this is where Poet is amazing right. at what he does because he goes from being so wrong to so right in a sentence. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? Like, yeah, I think just to add, yeah, yeah. approaching a woman 
and getting a response from a woman is isn't as difficult as you think it is. Yeah, the uh, initial approach because they're like this connotation that all women are rude and when you approach them, they're a so, it's Nonsense. not like that. Nonsense. The only thing is though, <laughs> you have about eight seconds. You have eight seconds. So in that eight seconds, you gotta have a certain type of vibe and you've got to approach with intent. I like and that. And then whatever happens after that is whatever happens after that. If you get past that eight seconds or that 15 seconds, now you've got a minute and a half. And you now know, you find yeah, yourself having three like minutes. Well, Chuck, now it, next minute is 10 and then it's numbers. Chuck, possibly. You know what, possibly. But I would suggest to people that are scared about it is to just do tiki taka at the start. Don't shoot straight away. Oh, yeah. So go central London. If you're a young cat like we were us, would see a girl, what's going on? You look nice. And then walk. Oh, a hundred. Don't say nothing else. Don't chat to her. You might want to chat to her because she looked bad, but who cares? You just keep it stepping. You see another girl, babe, them trainers are bad boy. You sk- do it to about five girls. And then once that confidence is up now. Now you're ready feet, for the full Yeah, thing. yo, baby. Yeah. What, let me because you're step what up. saying, yeah? Each, each time you walk past, you give a light compliment or whatever else, yeah? It's like a, it gives you a light energy bar. I'm telling you, you, know I'm you don't that, even know how it yours, does that, it does that, it your does step that. is changing now. All of a sudden you walk to central London like this. Kendrick Lamar, big stepper now, my guy. So here's where it gets Come funny on. now, yeah. So if you know you get the energy bar in it, each time you get an energy bar, so now you're ready. You see when you go and you hit them with the ticket that don't work, boom! You're <laughs> 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 in McDonald's eating a quarter pound of milk but thinking, you know, how do I get home? But the thing is, at least you know what to do to raise the energy raise bar. Ball. At least you know that bit. And the thing is, if you've got good friends around you like mine, <laughs> they'll just cuss you for an hour and then you get over it. Yeah. yeah. You get over, and do you know what I've done one time? I've even spoken to a girl, got turfed, saw another girl and said, oh babe, I want to talk to you, but I just got turfed, so I'm doubting it's going to happen. She goes, oh, what did you do? Now we've had a whole conversation about my technique. Mm. I don't know where that girl is today, but yeah. we had a good talk. Of course. And I let her go on with her life and I went on with mine. I could have asked for a number, everything. But my whole thing is, I just don't think you should walk to a girl with any ego. You or shouldn't anything. always be transactional like that. Yeah, man, just a vibe, man. Yeah. Especially if you're in like that type of spirit and zone. Yeah. Especially nowadays. I'm doing it back in the day when we had no social media. Imagine you're doing it now. They jump on the socials. Oh my God, I saw that guy up a day. He was a vibe, you know, and come on. People want to have a good time. Yeah, I'm not, a, I'll be honest with you. I'm not going to cap here. I'm not a big um, woman approaches cold, but I do, if I, if the necessary needs to occur, it's going to recur. The environment has Whatever to be that right. Means, yeah, certain things have just got to be right. I think that's, that's different. His, his is an approach with no intention. If she doesn't talk to me, I'm out. Of it's cool. You, when you're doing it, what you, from what you just said now, he said, oh, I need that. Not necessarily. But I get what, I get why you would think that. Oh, in, that means you're in, yeah, Chuck I get why you would more, think yeah, that, yeah. but that, not necessarily. Okay. Like, again, I can see a woman from... There, it's, it's Catch-22. Sometimes I can see a woman from afar, whatever, or she might walk past me and there's something that... She just looks really attractive. Yeah. And I might just highlight that she looks really nice today, whatever, and that's just that, Yeah. Not that's not a a mate like I don't do that all the time, but it's definitely within me. However, I guess there's this thing within me where it's like I'm not gonna just disturb anyone. Yeah, and it's like my vibe has to take me to do that. But though, if I see somebody walking by by or whatnot, and we get a light eye contact or whatnot, now I'm intrigued if I'm attracted because I'm like, okay, what what is my vibe saying on this? Because even if we do get eye contact. I'm gonna compliment, but I may not. I may not like go for the thing. I may not yam the food like that. I might. It might just be a little thing. Whatever. <laughs> it might but just be a little times, drive by. I like that. Like, Yo, no, drive you know by. What? Now, other times it's like, oh, okay. I've already been seeing you. Come and you've on. been seeing me. So now we might have to see where this seeing goes. You I like that. Saying? Seeing is believing. But what was you gonna say? Sorry, we we um diverted. You said you'd been thinking about dating. Yeah, I like the way we diverted though. It's a good direction. We're back on track now. We're back on the motorway. I was, I sent something to, something into the group and I started thinking about, I was talking to my boy about it today and I was like, dating culture. So for example, there's a Little Wayne song, I spoke about it here, where he said, more dangerous than internet dating. That's what he right, said yeah, on yeah. a mixtape. Yeah, yeah. And now we're at a point where that's common interest. We're now discussing me going on an app to have internet dating. So I'm looking at it and saying, all right, cool. The more the world got smaller, 
and the more uh, access to other countries was attainable whilst I'm sitting right here, I now have more access to go, yo, what's the girls over there saying? Oh, I can see a girl. Yo, what are you saying, babe? Yeah, yeah, I live in England. All right, cool. So now even dating is becoming more accessible to people in different countries. Mm. But now information about these dates are becoming more attainable. Right. People are becoming famous for dating. Yeah. So what does that do to the scope for the next? Because we had Blind Date before and that was almost like a game show and yeah. you would never really think about going on it. You were just watching it at home thinking, ah, look at these people going on Blind Date. Yeah. You might go on Blind Date now. Yeah. You might. So I want to know, what does that look like moving forward now that people's domesticated problems are online? See our children that are born into these domesticated problems. You might see your parents arguing online. Mm. You might have seen that your dad cheated on. <laughs> what does that generation look like for dating? Very far-fetched question, so far into the future. I understand it's like a mad thing, but judging on how things have changed from, I said to you, let's say 2010 when Lil Wayne said that, 14 years from forward, are we heading towards the most trauma ever in dating? Yeah, definitely. But do you know what I think as well, yeah? I just think that like, what will happen with this generation is almost what's happening right now. Talk to me. Bare misinformation. Ooh. It's a whole load of misinformation. Give me an example it goes back mis- to goes back to exactly what you was talking about, what we were both mentioning, yeah. Is there is this perception yeah. that speaking to women off the cuff is a very, very difficult thing to do because of how the attitude of certain women. But I just don't subscribe to that because I At just all. think you know, if you approach a woman in a certain type of way, naturally she's going to think, like if she's walking down the street and you just go and grab her by her arm aggressively, of course she's not going to be too complimentary about I that. don't blame if her. You go, exactly. If you go and you touch a, a part of her body, her, her ass or whatever, of course you, you get, you're starting this thing off on the wrong foot. But if you appro- approach in a friendly ma- in a friendly manner, mm. it might not work out well, but she, the chances are she's not going to be rude. Yeah. She might yeah. just keep it stepping. Oh, hi, you're right. Sorry, I'm I'm just off to work. A bit I'm busy. Yeah, I'm, gonna... I'm a bit busy. Yeah, and you could might see by her body language or whatever else. But there is this understanding though that, and I think this is one of the reasons why some people don't approach mm. because they just think because of that element yeah, of rejection. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I just think that the percentage of that in regards to the way people see it is going to increase even more. Oh. Just that, and that's, just, that's, just one, that's just one dynamic of it. There's so many different dynamics elements that of it, come to it. But it's just all of it is just all mis, misinformation and um, misunderstanding. People going on the fucking, on the internet talking about, you know, all women are this or all men are that or whatnot. And it's like, if you already find it very difficult to socialize with people, you're gonna go on the on the internet and listen to what some of these people are saying and take that as gospel. 100. Then do you know what it does? It breeds more people into into having a slight um, undertone of envy towards either a woman or another guy. Do you get what I'm saying? One hundred percent. Because now you're thinking that all of these. Let's just say, for example, you're just thinking all women want is this. Mm-hmm. They just, all they want is just a man with money. Yeah. They just want a man who's super rich and that's that. And if you don't have that, naturally you start looking at women thinking, fuck these bitches. Like I'm trying to chat to this girl and whatnot and she just wants a rich man. That's not necessarily the case. Or you start looking at the the Don who has got a little bit of money and you start envying him. And then it becomes a a whole load of self-hate within yourself because you think, I can't do nothing because I'm standing next to a Don who's got all the peas. But that's not all necessary. There is some truth to it in the sense, yeah, yeah. But it's not all as big as it is perceived to be. No. You don't have to be a multi-millionaire to catch a girl. Yes, there are going to be some people out there who have got a big amount of money and the pull towards a certain type of woman is going to be quite wide. Because and you could that, offer, you what could you offer said some... What you is important. Sorry to cut yeah. you. Certain type a of girl. woman. Yeah. You might not ever even want to speak to that girl. So that might not even be your type of girl anyway. So what's the problem? The internet is telling you that you're supposed to like this girl with this thing and whatnot. That might not even be your type of thing. Hey, if you can if you can actually identify from the get-go what you like, what you want. you oh, it's, won. Oh my God, bro. You've you know saved yourself see years. A, bro, do you know how many times I've, like, I've seen a girl or spoken to a girl mm. and we've had a conversation and quite quickly I've realised you're mad cool. But I'm definitely not the man for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not the girl yeah, yeah. for me and I am not the man for you. Yeah, but you're yeah, cool yeah, though. Yeah, 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 and yeah. I don't even have a mad issue with a part of your thought process and how you see the world. But this here, nah, this one's not. 
I can identify them things quick and I will I will remove myself from that part of it before it becomes an issue. Unless there's a little slam dunking going on that we might we want. We can just and pass yeah, through we can that, find that. You understand what I'm saying? Go for a little slam dunk and then we're good. But it's misinformation. In misinformation is definitely a problem. I was even, it's funny, dating has just become very interesting to me. Not because I want to get involved, but just because I like to talk to people. I've been talking to loads of girls about it. I spoke to two girls recently in the past week. One girl was talking about, oh, black men, there's too many different types of issues. And then she goes, that's why I'm going for white men. I what? Said, All right, cool. Yeah. Then so next black girl I spoke to said to me, oh, if... I just want a guy that wants to get married because obviously she's like she's a little bit she's like 30, early 30s and she's on some look if you ain't trying to get married anytime soon I'm not on it type of thing so I started thinking about both of them last night whilst I wasn't sleeping as usual and as I thinking to myself raw just from them two perspectives alone not to say that they're true but say that they were true for an example I had to say to because I started thinking about the previous one the previous girl saying she's going for white men when I was talking to this girl and I'd say to her Babe, do you know what's crazy to me? Like, what's so, so crazy when I hear about just that, the conversations about black men and then even some, like, I'm going to go and find a white guy. We're in England. Now, excuse my ignorance. I could be completely wrong. I think the experience with a white English guy is going to be more common than the experience with a black man. Because there's Nigerians who look at marriage and getting together completely different to Jamaicans who look at marriage and getting together completely different to Ghanaians so I said to this girl like you're a black girl you say you want to get a black man but you're restricting down the experience like you're like you're, yeah, you're saying you want to get sorry you're a black saying you want to get a white girl because of your experiences with black people but it looks like you're saying it off the strength of a consistency in one area and an inconsistency in another area but it's not even anybody's fault that's just Christopher Columbus that's not even anything to do with anybody and I found that interesting. So it made me definitely go, I don't want to get into dating. It's just too complicated, man. I if that find makes any sense. that, uh, without judging her too much here, I just find her thought process in that problematic. Oh, very problematic. And the reason why I say that is because, well, the first question is, would be, well, then where traditionally is she meeting these guys? And what type of guy is she looking for? Because if she is in the circus, there's a chance that she's just going to keep meeting clowns. That's one, yeah. You know I got right that down. Yeah. <laughs> you know I got right that one, dad. That but, was crazy. But also now you are essentially saying, well, because of this place that she's been to and met this these type of men, that now she meets every guy, black guy that she sees, she judges them with the same thing. Brush. It's the same, yeah. And that's the same issue that, like, see, like with black women, for example, yeah. That's, that's some of the things of what they what they mention. It's like. It's okay if you are, if you date other people or you're yeah. dating around or whatever. That's cool, yeah. But it's because it's a problem when you say, do you know what? I met these black. I, I dated this black girl and she had an attitude, and I met this black girl and she had an attitude, and that one had an attitude, and she this one had a bit of trauma. So I ain't dealing with black women. I'm gonna deal with white women. It's like hold on a minute. Like what are we doing here? Like just just because of these women that you've met that have these problems that now all of them are like this it's but, mental and then even the second you're doing woman, yourself a disservice by the way because disservice. ultimately you know you're blocking yourself you could potentially block yourself from a major blessing obviously if you if your thing is if your palette is wide your palette is wide but don't make it be at the detriment of somebody else like, don't I'm, make it be yeah. oh well you know what i'm over here i would be like afraid can i, can like I say something yeah? reading or something like that if i met let's say i met a, a woman who wasn't black yeah yeah and Let's say it was a white woman, hypothetically speaking, and I, I caught a vibe with her and whatnot, and she said to me, I don't, like, I don't date white men because they all have issues and they all have that, so I'm just going to find me a black man. I would, I, would, I would have an issue with that. I would have an issue with that. Because what happens the day that you meet a white guy that doesn't meet the criteria that you step up? What, are you just going to dash me to the side to try out this new thing? Yeah, I just don't think that that is even a compliment in itself anyway. It's like, you know what, fuck with me because you know what, I've met this Don and he is, the, he's a fucking, I just love this guy. Yeah, I hear that. I like that. Like yeah. not, oh, you know what, well, these lot have an issue, so I'm going to just go with you. Now it's like, <laughs> that's crazy to so me. So it's over here because you have an issue. So if you never had an issue, you wouldn't be over here. Over here, no, no, no. Unless you're Aisha Diaz, do you think? Yeah. Um, no, nah, I'm, not, I'm not on that. I don't know, but I just found that problematic. And I even found the problematic from the, the second girl who was yeah. basically saying that like, she was putting a time parameter on things like marriage and all of that. And yes. I was saying to her like, but I just think in certain 
black experiences, whether you're, if you're, like some of my friends that are Ghanaian, marriage was a serious thing. Yeah. And it was something that was happening quite soon yeah. after you were getting together from the people I met. I'm not saying all Ghanaian experiences are like that's that. That's kind of how it was, a, a, even here, I think. So that's what I mm. saw a lot of. Whereas my Caribbeans, like my Jamaicans, I'll say, were outside. Yeah. And I know some man that are with their girl for 10 years. Picnic, yard, everything. No marriage. But marriage is coming. We but we just that. don't know when it's up. coming. It's not like a, yeah, no, if I don't get married in four years. Not... Have you ever met somebody Crazy that has stuff. put a time parameter on... Marriage? Yeah. 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 And what like what did that look like? What, and what, like? what sort of conversations were you having? Like, What was the situation? They were creating checkpoints that they've, they... They were creating checkpoints in their mind that I guess from a, a general perspective looks decent enough if you watch enough Netflix but in my head I was just like <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to feel at that point you're just making it seem like these checkpoints are correlated to feelings so once we've met the parents and we've done this and done our first holiday and done that all of a sudden I'm meant to feel all of the no like surely it should be a cur- I just feel like marriage should be something that the man wants and the man demands from the woman it shouldn't be the other way around in my yeah. head because I have to get down on one knee and propose to you. So if you've had to force me to do it, this is a problem. Like I have to surprise you and do something I want to do consciously knowing that you want to do it. I just think the moment that the process is me being forced to do it personally, you saw the, the picture I sent today in the group. Which one? Oh. What animal was that? Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Um, Does that make sense, Chucky? Uh, yeah, I, I I hear you still. I think as well, like, I, there's a quote that came out, I reposted it, and I don't really want to butcher it too much, but it was a guy talking about how he, he's, um, he, how he feels that men love oh, um, authentically or whatever. And I thought it was quite interesting. It was a part men of it. Men love say again? What? Yeah, he, like, the point that he was making is, is that women or from his experience, yeah. Yeah. Like, they grow to 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 feel like, okay, at some point, I'm going to get married. So they, in their love, it's like, no, wait, find it. Because I want it. You don't want to butcher it. You want it to... I can find it. This is what I mean. Man. Go to it. Did you find go it? Go back, go back. yeah. Yo, good man. What's this? I think men love more identically. Huh? This is what I mean, man. You say, you say the same thing. I say, I think men... <laughs> Love yes. more authentically than women. Yes. And this is why. I can agree. But go ahead. Women are in love with love. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And because of that, I think you guys are wired to stick anybody in that spot. You can mm-hmm. you can make him fit. You guys are socialized from little girls to fall in love with the process, the pageantry of love, the, the courting phase and the dates and the, you know what I'm saying? He put his hand on my thigh. Yeah, oh, my I did. Mm-hmm. On the flip side, when a man fi- figures out that realizes that he's in love, that's not a happy experience. Nah, that's, like, I, I disagree with that bit. Because that is oh, no, for me, I'm with him. Now, because again, our two jobs are provide and protect. Mm-hmm. I love her means that I'm willing to die for her. That's mm-hmm. not mm-hmm. your responsibility. Or live for her. Right. right. So we're not going to be as flippant or as, uh, you know, generous with that love. Plus, we're not socialized to fall in love. The whole process right. like that. I just loved what he said there. That, the, it, the only part that I'm not going to nitpick it, it was just that um, it was not a happy experience only because I think, it, for me, it is a happy experience, but it's a weird experience because it's like, oh shit. Like, I'm really, I'm here and I really like this person. Like, I'm really, like I'm, I've, like, I'm feeling vulnerable a bit to that now. Do you understand what I'm saying? Which isn't an unhappy experience. It's just a weird one because it's like, w- the way that we see things is quite differently. Quite different. I'm not trying to find something to fall into the love that I am walking around and desiring. I'm just out here just doing my thing and whatever happens, happens. But obviously at some point, I'm looking for the companionship. But once it does happen, I'm like, it licks me across the forehead. With a girl, with a girl, and this is where I'm going to go to my point, and, and in my experience, yeah, 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 yeah. is that, like I've fit into what they feel they need to happen in their life to make them happy now or a certain point. Yeah. So like, I'll give you a, a I'll give you a direct example. I hope she doesn't get. Uh, <laughs> Look at this one. One time I'd met a girl, yeah, and 
we'd like we would hear it off or whatnot. Like no I wasn't there there with it. I wasn't there, but I was. She's attractive. We're just catching a young vibe or whatever. Yeah. Anyway, now yeah, we had a com- yes. So we had a conversation about something or the other, and I remember it was me, her, and her brethren, and she felt a little bit of a way about something that came up in the conversation. Yeah. Anyway, we're walking home, and then she just is like, "I just feel like you just wouldn't even marry me." I'm Woo! Like, what? I didn't even know her that long. Yeah. This turned into tears now. Yeah. So I'm uh, like, I would have said you're damn right. So I'm like, what? Like, I'm trying to understand what is going on here. Like, I'm super baffed. Like, what is happening? Also, I'm going to paint an extra part of this picture. Rosie. My friends had told me beforehand, this is where I went wrong. My friends, my friends had told me before, you don't give anyone a chance. You oh. don't give anyone a chance. You're, what was it? You're fussy, you're this and that, which I disagreed with. So while I was in this situation, I'm saying to myself, I'm giving this a chance. Even though I'm seeing certain things, yeah, I'm like, I'm and giving you know it what? a chance. Misinformation. Right. Like, misinformation, like you so said. So then, so that happened. Anyway, now, boom. Couple months now, go down the line. We have another conversation. Marriage comes up again. What do you think happens? Tears. Tears. Oh my God. So there's me, I'm stroking her arm, I'm doing this, that and the thing and bam, bam, bam and whatever, yeah. So then like, and I'm still, I'm, I'm confused as to what is happening here. Then someone else that we both know was getting married, yeah. And um, I said to her, yeah, like I'm going to this wedding or whatever and I'm actually playing the music or whatever. And then she's like, well, how old is he? I'm like, what does that matter? <sighs> so I've said how old he is. And then she's like, well, he's getting married. And I'm like, big man, I don't even know you, really. In my head, that's what I'm thinking. But I remember at that point, I got really frustrated now. Because I'm saying, hear what I'm saying, yeah? You are you are asking the wrong things. And this approach is just terrible. Horrible. What you're supposed to do is, you're supposed to ask me, do you believe in marriage? Okay. You've not even asked me that one time. You just assume. You're just assuming. Oh. Ask me that. If I tell you no... You got a decision to make. You got a decision I like to that, make. But you got to say, do you know what? Marriage is a big thing for me. Can I be with a man who don't want to get married? Can I be with him? And if you if you decide that you can, then you're going to have to park all of the other stuff and stay with man. Mm-hmm. And if not, then Craig David walk away. Come yeah? on, man. But if I, if I turn around and I say, yeah, like I would like to get married one day, then at least you know, okay, at some point, if we get to a certain point in our thing, that will that day will come, but you can't force that process. You can't. You've not even asked me though. You don't even and, know and, me. And you know what? Right now, and we're gonna get married. No, it's not happening anytime soon. I'm glad you know I that. I'm not thinking about it. I'm not you know thinking what? about it. I don't want to. How about we stay together for ten years? No ring. No, I'm saying. I'll phone you. <laughs> I'm saying the answer to the question is, oh yeah, like I, I like, I like, I would get married one day. I feel like I would. If it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen though. No. But Right now, this whole marriage thing is completely... This is not even on the table. You answer me the question and we move on. That's it. In the end, it didn't work out. (laughs) You think? (laughs) In the end, it didn't work out. But it speaks to... Oh, yeah, because this was the main thing of what I was going to say, yeah? When I took some time out to try to understand what was actually happening, I think for her, it was this thing where... You see, when you're a youth, yeah, a young boy... This misinformation. What do you feel like you're going to have by the time you're 30? You think you're going to be a multi-millionaire, you're going to have a castle, and you're going to be driving a, a, a Ferrari or something like that. But let's just let's just look at this in a realistic aspect. Maybe you're not going to be a multi-millionaire, but you might have a lot of money. You're not going to have a castle, but you're going to have a big house. You may maybe not drive a Ferrari, but you're going to drive a nice car. That's kind of what it is in a youth's mind. For a young girl, you'll find that sometimes... If you say to them, how do you what, how do you see your life by the time you're 30? They think, okay, marriage, family, uh, obviously maybe having a business or whatever else it may be. Yeah? And I think for her, as she was uh, approaching 30, she's thinking, Ross, I thought I was going to be married by this time. Instead of thinking, oh, do you know what? Like, I like this guy and, I, and let's see where this goes and let's see where if we can build something in it. She's putting me in the fairy tale. It's not fair. Early. And because we we're approaching it. So it wasn't necessarily about me. It could have been anyone. Now, because she's getting closer to it, it's thinking, I need to, I want to reach this target. But companionship don't work like that. 
And in fact, yeah, you're, you're right. only going to put yourself in a very unhappy place if you are trying to judge your, your life by these um, age milestones yeah. and stuff. Because, boy, listen, it happens to the best of us. It happened to me a little bit as well when I was really unhappy about where I was at a certain point in my life and that. And it took conversations and friends and perspective and whatever to have a different understanding. But... Yeah, naturally, I did think a little bit like that. When I was pro- approaching 30, I'm saying to myself, Rask, I'm looking at my bank account. I'm saying, Jesus. <laughs> it's not where this I was not the be. plan. This wasn't the plan. This weren't the plan. I ain't got this, I ain't got that and whatnot, but it's fine. But then it's like, do you know what, yeah, Chucks? This is, it's crazy. When I spoke, I, this, I think I was having this conversation a couple of days ago about this marriage thing, yeah. And they were saying, because of my religion, my religious background, mm. and like, I'm a Christian, mm. like, I'm big on marriage. And I said... Uh, cool, I, I understand that. They're like, so I would want to get married and there has to be some intention. And I'm like, but the way you say it, it's like, when I wake up, I hope God allows me to breathe. I'm not going to be like, oh God, make sure you make me breathe. Like, I'm, I want to be breathing. So I'm here with life. I have a relationship with God. I'm breathing. Everything's good. Why can't we treat the prospect of marriage like that? Mm. I know I need to get married. You know you need to get married. But let's just keep moving forward. And eventually, marriage might just crop up without us even asking. It would be a feeling. Yeah. It would be something because I don't know what that looks like because I've never been in that position before. Mm. So for me to put a time parameter on it, mm. this is mad. And I said to her, even more. I said, although I said sorry to go so left with it now, but you have to, like have to. I said, even when you take a look at the concept of marriage, like at the time they said that, it's a whole different time now. So if I looked at that in terms today, if I said I'm going to travel from my ass here, and that's the journey from my house here, it's a journey. Cool. I break down at bloody, I don't know, King's Cross. I can't look at the original map and say, how do I get to this place now? The whole thing is changed. So let's take a look at the course of time when they probably said about this marriage stuff in the Bible or whatever. Time has completely changed. So you see that map? I don't want to use it from the start of there anymore. I want to go forward and take a look at the climate that we're living in. Because I don't imagine that everything was so mixed up and Christopher Columbus was introduced then. So like, so now marriage needs to look like, it needs to be mixed with what you want and just a bit of compromise and realism. We are living in England. Even for you to find your person is difficult. Mm-hmm. They've probably been on a journey trying to find their person. Now you found each other. Shouldn't we spend more time just being happy and grateful that we found each other and now the journey of that exhaustion and then starting our journey and getting to a place and then saying... Because marriage ain't like it was back in the day. This is a business decision. So if I'm making this business decision of marriage, we have to make sure we got our shit intact. It can't be based upon feeling. Mm. Marriage is expensive. Oh, man. So I'm just like, I don't know. I just think, I understand. And this is to more people that, you know, have religious beliefs. I just believe that there should be a bit more of a compromising thought when it comes to marriage, especially considering the fact we're in so much different positions in life, in thought, when it comes to relationships. Mm. So that pressure, like you said, of giving me your fairy tale, I think it's so, so inconsiderate, brother. I'm not even, I didn't even know I was in this fairy tale. Mm. Was you gonna say that? Yeah, I was gonna, just to, sorry, just to, just to like go into your point, I do agree with you, it is a massive business decision, but I do, like, I've re- I got a slight rebuttal, like, like marriage is more so, for me, anyway, it's like you. As long as you both already know that this is the person, yeah, marriage is gonna find its way to you eventually. Yeah. And um, I mean, I don't know much too much about it, but like, I'm more so like on the vibe of like just like getting approved from God, like just having it done in front of God, more so rather than the actual signing of the papers and all of that stuff see, see that's and that's where i always have questions about marriage because i'm like for me in life at the end of the day i'm not interested in hollywood's perception of how i should live my life i'm interested in what i want from life and how can i obtain it so if i want to find a companion and i want to be married per se under the eyes of the lord or whatever why do i need papers like whatever financial benefits you want to get from it why don't we just put it in place with a will or something like that like if you any blessing make you a bit or, or whatever i need to do i was like why have i got to make this sign these papers that to me is just like i'm doing today i don't know what it looked like back in the day but today it's like i'm making the country aware or whoever ign- per se aware that i am now with this person it's just nothing to do with them <laughs> so if I'm marrying this girl I'm just wanna I, look, why can't I just be with you 
we have some type of blessing where in which we're together. I can't just walk away from it. I don't know. I'm not gonna just walk away from it anyway if you're my. So I don't understand why we've got to sign all these papers and do all this other stuff because. Brother, I've seen people get married and then literally walk and then there's some table and then they're signing papers and smiling. And I'm like, what did you do? Did you just sign for Arsenal? Like, what's going on, my nigga? Like, this is what? Married in the, being married in a church is its own legal document. Yeah. It's, it's literally its own legal document. Like, it's not legal. Yeah, yeah. I don't think it's possible. And church. I don't think you see. Where's think love? I like that, L. I, I get you, but I don't think getting married in a church is. You can get married in a church and it not be legal. Yeah, but also, well, we gotta find a new way. You don't even have to be. You don't even have to be in love to get married. You don't have to love to get married. You don't have to love to marry. I don't even know if these people like traditionally was in love in love like yeah. that. I think that some people were. It was a. Um, uh, there's that. There's that. There's there's yeah. There's there's the youth element, but there's the security. There is the sex. Nah, mm. it is like. I'm the, just being serious. The, <laughs> it is about, I guess, building something. It's almost like a, I don't want to say a business. Well, it sounds like that, but it's in some way. A joint but maybe enterprise. just like from a community, um, a community aspect. But that's a conversa- that's, listen, that's we'll a conversation. Listen, we separate conversation another time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, because there's some other things that I want to get into. But so, also, do you know what? One day we have to talk about though. Yeah, is what you kind of lightly mentioned was that in African countries, for example. You know, marriage is a has been I in think. certain countries or whatever. Yeah, but what went wrong in Jamaica? We have to have a conversation a little bit about that. You know why? You know, I was with someone the, the other day. Yeah, away, she but... goes to me. <laughs> she goes to me. She goes to me. Oh yeah, like she's Nigerian. She said, Oh yeah, my parents just told me to stay. Don't just stay away from Jamaicans. I'm like, why? Because they they um. She said, oh, you just find that they don't usually get married. They don't usually settle down in relationships and they don't. And I'm like, that's not traditionally true. Like, it's that not, was it's always just the case. that move here. But, <laughs> 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 no, but out there is a little, it does feel like out there is also, you know, okay. Who I'm here? sorry. <laughs> Bare of my family members are married. But you see the How loud ones they? like me. How old are they? Not married. Young. Young going to meet some of them. Jamaican. Yeah, but the Jamaicans are, are allowed Niger- like me. Are they married to Nigerians or Ghanaians? Jamaican. They're married in Jamaica, dog. I'm saying to you, me and my ones that are allowed, and we've experienced too much. I wonder if there's something in you know. I was. <laughs> I'm here to defend Jamaicans. I got us. I got us. I got us. I was in. Um, I was getting prepared for my one extra show. Yeah, come on. It, it was. It starts what? a weekend, so I do this part. Yeah, I do this. Part, hey, what, what, yeah, what, what day is your show? Uh, it's a Saturday um, from eleven o'clock. Yeah, PM. Thank you. Just Say what I'm saying, yeah? So I do this thing. Last half an hour is just pure slow jams. No talking. Just pure slow jams. But as it's dance all weekender, they was like, you know what? Do um, Sorry, dance all Take that jams. off the screen. Because I know what you're trying to do to my Jamaican. Just take it off the screen. The findings okay. reveal that... Uh, Why are you reading it? I should... ...in marriage is not as essential... as not as essential a Jamaican culture value as migration but that the institution of marriage, although, no, I can't see it because of the, the light, dominant, bro. Not the dominant form of coupling. In not the case. dominant form of coupling is important enough to last. Let me tell you why that's a lie. Do you know how many Caucasian plus size women just are married to Jamaicans? It's just lies. No, but here, what I'm, let me just Carry get on. to the point. Sorry. So anyway, yeah, boom. So the last half an hour this time has to be my interpretation of dance or slow jams, yeah? Big man. You know what was compiling the set, yeah? At the beginning of nearly every tune, yeah. your pussy big no, me cocky lang no, and it's like, and even the notes. Like, I hear you. No, I hear you. Even the slow jams, yeah, is like. If you go into reggae, it's not necessarily like that. But in dancehall, it is very much my cocky long, my yeah. pussy this. Nah, my, oh, it's all you know, about I've, evasive, being hey, evasive. Hey, man said, la, no, let me cheat upon my girlfriend. Yeah. Oh, banger. <laughs> banger. <laughs> banger. The man's saying, Lord, don't make me cheat. That's Lord, I'm, I, I beg you, don't make me cheat on her. Yeah, but you got some nobody you know with me and you. I yeah, nobody but there's enough of them. I love it. Um, but it's like allow it, man. Anyway, man. As a youth, allow it. yeah, Four growing up. Niners. As a youth growing up now, <laughs> as you as a youth growing I'm up. Man, a deets in their wife. That's <laughs> a deets in their wife. Jesus. 
But as a as a youth growing up, there's a bit of a conflict there, isn't it? Really, because it's like if around you not much people are together, and then there's like one, albeit a small, but it's still big. Dance on is big. I'm not putting it all on it, by the way. Yeah, I'm not putting it all on it. But I'm just saying. And then there's that element of yeah, like we're just out here fucking. But then Bob Marley just had a film, One Love. <laughs> Yeah, but the, pay attention to what you want in life. He weren't dancehall, and them times there, you'd probably there'd probably be an argument to say that them times there, there was a lot more companionship and togetherness. Maybe not married, <laughs> not with Bob, but carry on. Yeah, maybe not with Bob, but he. No, was but I do hear where you're coming from, and I do think there is an influence. But I still stick to the notion that I'm sorry, life is a classroom, and if you've got four bad students in a class of thirty, it's a bad class, and I stick to that because I know bare my family members are married. I just think that when you work at the compromise, like I said, we're not in Jamaica. We're in England. Everyone don't think the same as us. So for us to have these long-standing relationships with people culturally that we can't relate to, that's just not our thing. But how you much, know Jamaica, that's not how our much thing. Jamaicans do you think, percentage-wise, this is going to be very difficult to answer, yeah? yeah? Look at marriage compared to, you would say, percentage. Yeah? Compared to, you would say, like, Nigerian or Ghanaian. Wait, say that again? Because I thought I had a thought in my head. I had a thought in my mind that I'm going to execute. Like how many of your Jamaican friends Yeah. now, today, today, do you think look at marriage compared to, you would say, your Nigerian or Ghanaian? All of them. Honestly. All, all of, of them. them. Brother, I don't know about your Nigerian and Ghanaian friends. My Nigerian and Ghanaian friends are on the roads. They're in prison. They marriage is not a priority to them. Their ops are a priority to them. I don't know what... <laughs> I don't know what everyone's... I don't know how everyone's pretending this ain't the case, my guy. No, I mean, over there, there's no, over there is over there. There's infidelity to pieces. I'm not saying that. I think infidelity exists everywhere. I'm but not also, convinced. Also, I actually did a search the other day of yeah. like where had the most. What was it like couples or com uh, marriages and stuff like that? And I think it's like Sri Lanka or some shit. But yeah, I think it's Sri Lanka. You can maybe try and put it up on the screen, something like that. But I'm not convinced that you can go anywhere in the world and say that, like, all men or all women in this particular country are just faithful like that, unless they are under some real strict cultural ruling. All right, let me just show you this. And this is why- Do you I hear what I'm saying? I hear you, but this is what makes me upset because they're trying to do my country bad and me if I stand up for them even though I'm sitting down. What's the population of Nigeria? No, that's why I said percentages. Yeah. No, but, but what's the population of Nigeria? It's 220 million or something. 218 in comparison to just under 3 million. So there's going to be more examples of successful relationships which have a stronger influence on more people than there is going to be. Because no and matter what anybody also, says to all, me, on, on the flip it's going to be... On the flip side of it, there's more examples. There could be more examples of fuckery. I doubt it. I think life is a classroom. That's why I said percentages. But I doubt it because if Jamaica was that, it would be Iraq. It's not. It's actually what, not what? that. If it was all war and everyone's just against each other, it's too small. So realistically, when it is bad, That's they go, they, in terms of like, just in general, like no one's, Jamaica's not that bad. They're trying to make my, my country be like, everyone's just no, cheating no on each other. And we already know the violence is high. No, no, it's one, a, no one's it's saying it's bad. There are relationships. Maybe, who's to say that their way of doing it is wrong? No, it, no, no. It, it might be wrong in the eyes of okay, okay. yeah do you know what I, I'm going Chucky mad. you're I'm going, going mad, mad now I'm going mad. you're going mad it is wrong some of the things that they're it's crazy the Jamaicans that the slow jumps that you just brought up with a dance hall it's true every single one is about I guess okay song. let me clean this up because I'm struggling okay right let now. me clean this up what I would say is probably wrong is the having the use and just the disappearing thing I'm not talking about that but I'm talking about like who's to say that like being with one, per uh, you know where I'm going now. Being with like not necessarily one person, but just being in even in a marriage like that is the right thing. All right, so let's pause. It Wh feels like the right thing. It does feel like the right thing. But what is right and what is wrong? Pause there. Where are you going to see a man with more than one wife more commonly found? Africa or the Caribbean? <laughs> so definitely. Here's the case. <laughs> Rest it to blood clot. Leave my yard alone. So then, what is right and what is wrong? I think it's what Neo's on polyg was it what's it called? A polygamy. Polygamy. Neo's on that right now out here promoting it. On a mad thing. He's got two wives, he doesn't care. He obviously cheated on his last gal. He's out on the roads, two wives, I'm respecting it. Oh, so I'm, I'm not saying but it's also religion. Huh? That's also it. Is it in religion? He's in the United States of America. There is no God there, it's stolen land. 
Yeah, that's right. But it's not right. It's not right. It's not <laughs> yeah, but he's not a part of. He's not a part of that. He's just no, a man on road. He's just a man from St. Louis. He's a liar. He said it's all because of you. By the way, I don't know if he's from St. Louis. I'm just saying that. No, no, no. He's definitely from. So, the head shape leads me to believe it's some. <laughs> <laughs> it's right, you know from, what? Hey, he's a gangster, go. by the way. Hey, know? I will go. But I wanted to. Oh, mm. it's mad. Don't you do that face. I spoke to him. He's a gangster, bro. Who? Speak to Neo. Big facts. Neo's a gang. He's family gangsters. Big facts. Yeah, but he's. That's I don't me. know what we're doing here. Sorry, but he's trying to pay anyway, Neil. Don't do that. Um, what we didn't talk about, yeah, there's not even a way to segue into this year, but I did want to lightly get into a conversation about AI because mm. we never talked about. I don't think we was here when Drake dropped Taylor Made, where he Incredible. used um, two packs, two packs uh, voice and Snoop's. Yeah, I don't know if you know that. Um, it seems like two packs of state is looking to sue or whatever. Yeah. I don't know how they can do that. How? The song's on Instagram and bloody Twitter. He's taking it down. Apparently he's taking it down from wherever it was taken down from. Where did he originally put it? On Twitter and Instagram. So you can't delete it from there? Did he? When? Did he? Check, double check that. Fact, oh, is it? Fact check it anyway, yeah? To be honest with you, I thought it was I a genius wanna, move. I didn't want to necessarily just talk about that because we've spoken so much about Drake and thing or whatever. But I do think there's a conversation in this AI thing again. Because, yeah. Yeah. My first thing was, how did he actually do that anyway? AI. Yeah, but how do you, where? Like, what app? It's the technology, isn't it? Like, they've all, What's the technology? What's it called? Someone that's specially in that world knows it. Like, a couple of people. Put, uh? Put it in the comments. Put it in the comments. I want to know it. what that app is, firstly. Yeah. But do you know, do you understand here, yeah? Yeah. At some point, if we're looking into the future a little bit, I feel like we, especially an element of us within Western society, is already very sceptical about stuff. Yeah. Big man, could you imagine the level of scepticism? Is that the right word? Forget it. We make up words here. Right. That is going to, that is going to erupt within this. Because at some point, how are you even really going to, how do, like, surely, yeah, surely, there's been an example of this already and we just don't even know. Well, Game did pretend to be... No, 50 Cent pretended to be the Game back in the day when he dissed him and had yeah. a conversation on the track mm-hmm. with Game. So I think a lot of that, I think Drake kind of remembers that and implemented that with yeah, used yeah. AI. Um, AI is dangerous. I'm scared of AI and that's the reasons why I think... If why are you t- scared of AI? Let's I'm scared of AI because... All right, put it like this, yeah. If there's ever a point where we want truth, it's now Cat Williams was right. So the truth about situations that more I take a look at this music situation is either you're going to have culture in music or you're going to have pop. I think in pop, it's going to be very hard to detect AI. I think in culture, it'll be a lot easier because things are a little bit more regimented, a little bit more, this is the way it is. In pop, Madonna could make a reggae song tomorrow and everyone's cool with it. So you would never say that can't be Madonna. It might be Madonna. But if you hear Kendrick Lamar on some dance hall, at least we can go, that's probably <laughs> yeah, AI. Yeah, but so, the, in, the, in, the, the intelligence would maybe m- make it not do that. What do you mean? They, so it wouldn't do... I know it wouldn't, it wouldn't do that, but I'm saying to you, I'm, that's just, I mean, that's sorry, I should make, be more clearer. That's an extreme point, but I mean, yeah. the specialists within the cultural field will have more of a say to go, this might be AI. But if it was all left to just pop, we're screwed over because it's all about surface value. You don't even know what's going on under the under. So like some of the Kendrick joints I hear, I'm like, that ain't Kendrick. I can confidently say that ain't Kendrick because I consume too much Kendrick. Whereas when I heard the first Drake, I was like, I think this is Drake. I ne- I honestly said, I think this is Drake. But here's the problem. It's the way you started the sentence. I think. Of course, you can never be 100% sure because of the AI, but- That's the, reason- the problem. But then again- We can never, could you imagine that? Like we're getting to that point, like big man, at one time mm. in my day, yeah, go. I would just put in a CD of Snoop or Skepta, or whatever yeah. it is, and it was just Skepta. Now, mm. I can hear something. I can go on Spotify right now, even on Spotify right now, mm. and go into, I don't know, let's say Nipsey. I've been listening to Nipsey today or whatever, yeah? Man, this is probably not a good example because he's... Um, He's passed, but let's just say a living artist or whatnot. I could go in there, a new track could come out, and it might not be them. Do you reckon AI makes things easier because of lack of quality threshold as well? Oh. <laughs> when I used to hear a Jay-Z verse back in the day, I didn't think anyone else could write that. Why am I now believing other people can write some of our top artists? If there's meant to be the top artists in the country, 
Because in football, I don't ever think you can find any AI versions of Messi or Cristiano Ronaldo or Thierry Henry. It don't exist. So why are we now finding the most skilled writers with the pen? Why are they having AI interpretations of them? I'm not saying that it shouldn't happen to pop. That's why I kept saying pop and specialists. To the people that are specialists, I'm not saying we're going to get it 100% right. Like I said, you can never know. But there are some artists that are so skilled with the pen. Like, we can't hear a verse and assume that's them. Yeah. Obviously, it's difficult. But how many, how many of them is there? That And that's the problem. The lack of quality today. Yeah. Oh, my God. This All, all this music that's happening from the United States, the, the ele- this is probably why I can't sleep. I'm out watching Queen Flips, Flucking Responses, and the Academics, I'm staying there. I'm even invested in this Quavo and Chris Brown beef. Oh, like, I there. care. But... The lack of quality threshold I'm seeing outside of that making me go, that's why I wasn't excited by, by, by music. It's not made with that anything. So you can replicate this. It's not made with anything. Yeah. It's probably written by someone else as well. So it's been AI. How about that? It's been AI anyway. <laughs> Jumbotron is AI because Little Yachty wrote it. So Little I Yachty was just spat it and done. And that's another thing that's going to probably happen. What? Like, at the end of the day, AI existed before because some of you don't write your own stuff. Right. So that person should have just spat your bars and then done an AI version for you anyway, if we're being totally honest. Do you know where I'm coming from? So that's why I'm saying niggas need to start improving your pen, man. Go buy a Theosaurus. Go read some books. Go live some life. I'm very curious to know, though, what um, music and film contracts are going to start looking like. Someone that I know who's an actress yeah. had said to me that she went to do a, um, she went to go and be, to fill in for somebody or something like that, or to just like, I think she was going to be an extra. Yeah. And in the contract, it was basically like, once you sign this, you're essentially signing over your likeness so mm-hmm. that they can use it for when you, ain't, if in the future, whenever you ain't there. She saw it in her contract and was like, that needs to come out immediately. And then ultimately didn't get the job, yeah. Um, it was so interesting her explaining that to me and it was a little bit over my head at the time but I was like so what the small print is already funny yeah what does a small print start looking like now and then how does that then start affecting like creatives in the long run do you know what's going to happen eventually and I could be wrong but I think this might happen obviously you could be wrong Paul they're going to make one pages one what one pages what do you mean? What's that? They make small print, and I think small print existed to probably confuse the individuals. I'm, listening, I'm just paying for the parking. Box. No, come yeah. on, my guy. I think they made small print, and I'm not saying all contracts are going to be like this, but for example, Kanye West, a lot of his contracts are one pages. One pages? Yeah. So it's just like, just a little bit of information and then you just sign it. it. Yeah, but nah. Nah, because that's, you can't get, they can't fool you in the in the small print with that. What's that? That only, a one pager only really benefits the person who is ignorant to contracts because it's easy to read. No, but that's what I think. But then whatever in the contract is in the contract. With a one pager, there's less information. What I'm basically essentially saying is they're going to put less information in oh. these contracts. They're putting so much information in the contracts. I think it's to, to, to F you over. I think it's in the first three letters. I but think the problem the, is though, with less, if there's less information in the contract, then it's not... Then you're tied to things. things. Have, yeah, exactly. So what's the problem? It's open to interpretation. Yes, the, then that means that you can bust case more. Ooh. It has to be detailed. It has to be. Because then that way, if you turn around and say, Ra, like, no, I didn't, that, I didn't, I don't like that. Why did you use that? They could turn around and say, it was in the contract. It was on page 968B. So what does a contract look like with like ten, in the style of the Ten Commandments? Because when you look at a commandment, you don't think anything outside it. You don't find anything in between it. It is what it is. Yeah, but the Ten Commandments were still, they were still like... I'm saying an interpretation of that. I'm not saying directly that, but I'm saying to you... But even then, the Ten Commandments still had um, like thingies. So it was like, do not commit murder unless yeah. it was in the act of self-defense, for example. So, so like, that's a one-pager. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but, but then look where we are now though yeah. so then where we are now is if you look at law for example which is always forever changing is because there are new things that are coming up which is why they're going to start changing the laws with this AI thing anyway because it's like they can do whatever they want at the moment but they don't necessarily or we as some of the people are not necessarily aware of the problems that can be caused with it or the crimes that can be caused with it so then later on down the line they just start adding stuff because 
ultimately, in the beginning, it probably was just very vague. Don't kill anyone. And then what ends up happening is, is that, you know what? Someone came into the house one day with a flipping, with a, with a knife and held up the family. And then the Ute came and then killed the guy. So now you can't put him in the same thing as this person. So now we need to add a little bit more to this. Don't, you can't kill anyone. Well, you can't, what is it? Um, first degree, second degree, I hear manslaughter. Because everything all of these is a bit things. more. It just, yeah, it's like honestly... nuance. So the nuance is just going to mm. keep coming. And that's where this becomes interesting because right now, in some way, shape or form, this AI thing is a free for all. You can do what you want right now because there isn't much laws around it. But there are going to be at no, some point. No, there are definitely laws around it. They probably of, are, but I've I'm got like my voice is my voice. If you took my voice and done something with it, that's what I'm trying to say to you. This is a one pager. I say to you, no, done. What's the what's, what's no? If I said to someone, that, say I, I've got my voice all sorted because my it happened to my brethren. Right. Um, they used they done some advert voice thing whatever. He found his voice on some Instagram thing. My man got paid out. He said, what's going on? And his contract was mad simple. Is it I, won't lie to he, you. Is it he, I don't know the details of it. I can't say the details of it. Someone got paid for it. Is that what Yeah, someone got paid for something else. And he goes, but my voice was in it. And then they had to pay him out. And it was, and I, I'm explaining it so vague. But his whole thing was, Paul, I keep things so, so simple. Here's the start date that you can use this. Here's the finish date you can use it. Right. Outside of that, you cannot use it. Right. They used it outside of that. They said, um, oh, but it was for something different. He said, I've stated in my contract, you cannot use my voice outside of this date for anything. You cannot use my voice. So you've used it. Pay me out. Do you know where I'm coming from? Can I give a slight rebuttal? It might be a little bit different. Yeah, I, don't, I, I need to know more of the details about it, obviously, but... It might be a little bit different, but like, pictures. Pictures are different, completely different. But that's your likeness. That's you. Mm-hmm. I, I, when, when Chucky done the Brits, and we went on and got, I found Brit pictures on Getty, mm-hmm. I wasn't allowed to use a picture of Chucky. Chucky wouldn't be allowed to use pictures of Chucky unless you paid three bills for that picture. Mm-hmm. But that's that's Chucks. Why why does Chucks have to pay for a picture of himself? I don't have to. I didn't have to pay for that picture. I don't think no. You Could I have just told them? Right, that's the picture of me. Nah. No. No. Nope. What? <laughs> you yeah. what? No. Nope. Not what do you mean? I'm saying it's gonna, I, I think it's going to eventually shift to something like that. Yeah, but then we're speaking about a situation that... So wait, like Getty no... just gets my thing and I can't... Oh yeah, Getty don't get it to you. But yeah, but you're you're describing a situation that I've walked into. I'm talking about something I'm fully contra- okay. a contractual situation. Okay, yeah, I just... Yeah, yeah. Personally, for me, I can only speak for myself. A lot of my contracts, apart from the ones I've recent, are very simple, you know? And it's making sure that I get what I want. I already know what you want. And I think when you look at contracts, I've done that to deal with so much contracts over the line of the years, yeah? So many contracts. I cannot lie to you. There are so much things in there that just don't need to be in there. Like there's so much things in the contract that I have no opinion on and you have no opinion on, but a standard quota. You mix that with something that's necessary and the necessary thing is like point one hundred and fifty-two. And I've just gone through like 50 irrelevant points. I won't lie to you. By the time I'm there, you're a little bit like exhausted. So I'm just like, I think there's a lot of things you can take out of contract to make it more simpler. That's, I think that it's might part just of the be con. because it's irrelevant to you in your situation in that moment. However, though, yeah. the reason why it's probably in there is because that one thing that nev- no one ever thought would happen did happen. No, but, ha- but I'm saying to you today, I'm not affected by any of those contracts. So I understand where you're coming from. Yeah, yeah. But in, ha- yeah, in like, actual like, reality, good. nothing's happened. So, and I've made these contracts simple. I've not had any problems moving forward or any- nothing like that. So, mo- some of them are crazy. Like, new one I'm about to do, crazy, come on. Come it's on. mad. And I do- I'm not saying there's not going to be enigmas. And that can't be a one rule. page of, bro. No, that one's, I think there's enigmas. There's exceptions to the rule. But I'm telling you, a lot of contracts, and I think a lot of people will understand that I've been in the business doing what I've done for as long as I've done, do not have to be as complicated as they're given. They genuinely don't. Well, you're gonna find in a field of music, pretty much, and in within film, that they are complicated. Yeah, and that's with why large money to, is complicated. That's why you have to pay someone that is gonna that you can trust, that is gonna be able to go through the fine details and find out like what needs to be marked off or what is important and what isn't important. Because yeah, there's a chance that somebody could just they could okay let's say for example yeah there might not be something in the contract yeah and later on down the line they might do something yeah which they shouldn't do and they could be liable for because it wasn't in the contract still and it is your likeness however though when it comes to going to court you are now finding yourself going against 
the Coca-Cola who have the best lawyers in the world. 100%. And you don't even have the peas to even fight this Chat case now. So you know what? Now you just have to just hold that. Whereas if it's in the contract somewhere in there, even in the small print or whatnot, it's like, hold on, now you can't use that against me. I'm using it against you. Now it's we're discussing match. the semantics of the contract, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. I said, I'm talking about the necessary things in the contract that will affect you. That's not going to be 150 pages worth of information. It's not. Whoever's telling you that it is, cool, fair enough. But I can I can bring probably a contract now after this and show you and say, and I signed it, but all of the things will never affect you for the rest of your life. It's just what you put in no, a contract. There's I, so many listen, contracts like that. I'm with you. I'm like, with you. But what I'm, the point I'm making is, is that it's... The, it's 99.9% .9 not going to affect you. But there's still that one little bit there that where it could. And that's why, Depends maybe the, the reason is, why it's in there is because even though it might have been a long time ago, or it might have been very recent, or this thing might have been going on for a very long time, there was something in there that was a bit shaky. Yep. And so now, Moving a forward. person is just like, even though we know it's never going to happen, we're putting it in there just in case an alien comes down and something weird goes on. Do you know why I think that is the case though? Because contracts are there to con you. So then when you get new information, it's just, oh, sorry about that. Okay. But realistically, if it wasn't there to con you, it could possibly be a one pager, but it's there to F Which you is my point. That's why I'm like moving forward. Essentially, I think it's going to get to the point where this AI situation in the world of popular culture will be able to do whatever it wants. But you see when Future says, oh, hang with rats, there's some new type shit. There's going to be principles over here that you're going to have to apply if you go into certain places in hip hop where they're going to go, sorry, my guy, one page of thing, you can't use it or within the pop world. Because it's all coming to... Anyway, you'll see a couple of weeks. Shit will happen in our... What just happened in the pop world? This shit will happen here. Trust me. I'm telling you, bruv. People are dying to sign contracts, man. No matter how much people like, there's conversation and information and you know what, like we have, we talk about like, or people talk about what is the right thing to do or things to look out for, what not. You know what? There's still a bunch of people out, there's still a person out there who can just offer a bunch of money and twang someone's head. And they're gonna sign, they're just gonna sign it. Always, which always. Is like, which is super unfortunate. Always. But I think this AI thing is, is going to create even more skepticism. And I wonder what, <laughs> I wonder what that looks like. When we're all extremely skeptical, how does that affect everyday life? When we all just don't Every know. Every day don't know what's going on. We just on. don't know. That, like can, said, that can drive some people crazy. I that feel so for the people crazy. that listen to a rubbish artist. Because <laughs> you're probably right. But yeah. for people that listen to Future, we're good. All my Future to fans, future. we're good. We ain't got nothing to worry about. Let's do this um, Chris Brown and Quavo thing very quickly. Chris Brown came out. He definitely... Chris Brown's been wanting to fight anyway. Yes. He's been wanting to swing it with somebody. Why? He's been wanting to do that. Not just somebody. With Quavo for a yeah, very yeah, long yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, with Quavo. But I do feel like Chris Brown has been wanting to have a fight with somebody. Of course. But if you take a look at Quavo, this history is like 2017. I remember them going to fight. Is this over because this Karuchi thing? Possibly, but it must have grown since then. Do you remember 2017, uh, the... The BT Awards ceremony where Migos went to go and fight Joe Budden. Yes. That's the same time that Migos went to go and fight Chris Brown. And they really? came with the whole of Atlanta in a car park. You can type it well, in. Did they try to rush him? They tried to rush him. Chris Brown sat on the car like this. Was he on it? Of course Chris Brown's on it. You heard the song. You want to smoke with me? You want to smoke with me? You Chris Brown's on it. The video's on YouTube right now, bro. I want to just so, do one backflip and kick a man in his face, you know? Three years ago, kick Quavo. Kick in his blouse and skirt. Scott. Three years ago, I think Chris Brown called out Quavo, saying yeah, they yeah. set that basketball game. But they sat there next to each other and that. Nothing In fashion but However, though, even though I saw people saying, oh, they didn't, like, nothing didn't happen, they saw each other and whatnot. I'll be honest with you. To me, Chris Brown's body language still looked very confrontational. He was sat like this. Yes. And it was still very much like, he's in your space a bit, though. You know, like a rude boy, like a, I'm not saying that Quavo ain't, but I'm just saying a proper rude boy would have been on a vibe of, but I itch up just a tiny a bit. Like, I don't really like our, already I don't like you. Already I don't like you, but I'm gonna need you to itch up a tiny bit. Cause he was, he was very much on a like, leaning forward, but this is my space. Yeah, no Tom. I don't like that. I don't even like when I'm on the aeroplane and I'm in the middle seat 
and both people think that they can have both sides of the armrest. Yeah, exactly. Nah, let, let me give me one side. But I'll so, be honest, can I like can I say yeah? yeah. I did actually like Quavo's thing. It was incredible. <laughs> Quavo's tree was a hey, all he needed on that was like a next kind of uh, like a bridge or another kind of hook, and this thing would get slapped in a dance, you know. Why can't I get slapped in a dance? I'm on your bum for pussy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I know for pussy. That song is cold. The way the man said you punched her in her face, what not. Why, what's he saying? But the Rihanna thing. Yeah, he's a, he said a couple of things. I need to Quavo had brother. bars. So wait, hold on a minute. I didn't know that Chris Brown's auntie got tied up like that. So what do you mean? Of course you did. I didn't know that. The family got, typed that in, man. Chris Brown's family um, home. Like they ran into a home or something. Like they didn't tell you that the details that the auntie got tied up, but definitely they ran into the family home and well, held the auntie was in there and, that and they just. I know he's. Been, I know men have come to his yard and tried to rob his yard and all that. I didn't realize that auntie was in there. Yeah, but I didn't realize that Chris Brown beat Sweetie was Quavo was with Sweetie. So there's loads of things we're finding out. I didn't know that um, Frank Ocean beat up Chris Brown. That's not true. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Quavo is such a liar, bro. Even that's online. Type in Frank. Type what, in Frank. Fight? Type in Frank Ocean beats up Chris Brown's bouncer or bodyguard. Bouncer or security. Frank Ocean beat type up in, a bouncer. Type in Frank Ocean knocks out Chris Brown's security. Now that this can happen. You know, though. All you need to happen. do is just hit a man on the sweet spot. No, listen. Frank Why? Ocean done it with swag. Huh? I'm gonna stop saying it. That's foolishness. But <laughs> <laughs> but I yeah, couldn't... no. All you need to do is just hit him on the sweet spot, and that's it. They're, they're done. Stick a fork in them. What did you type in? Uh, Frank Ocean, Chris Brown security. I've got to go. You got to go. Well, listen, it's there. What the fight? Chris Brown punches. It's there. What the actual fight? Chris Brown punching. Um, not with Frank Ocean. I was Ocean asking punching. for a yes or a no. Yeah. Oh. There you go. What? This is him fighting the security. Frank is that Ocean. Frank? Frank's in the shirt. No. In the grey shirt. Yay. Oh. Yay. So th- you need to understand there's history. It lets me know I'm a sad guy who needed some type of time. Frank can swing like that. Frank, Frank, come on. Your best song wasn't a single. Wait, <laughs> wait, <laughs> wait, wait, are we giving misinformation here? Is this actually a thing? That's Frank. Oh, that's on TMZ. Did you not just see it had But TMZ. why isn't anyone stepping in with Frank on a vibe of... Nobody was with Frank. And where's... Where, ain't Chris Brown this got is more 2011, security? 2011, you know, like 2012. Anyone got more security huh? than that? That's just one... Security. Don't you remember Frank Ocean versus Chris Brown and they're driving on the highway and I think... I can't I remember, remember that. Yeah, there's big... Fam, come on, my brother, outside, I'm man. talking about swinging. Niggas swing, Because man. let me tell you something. One thing that I do believe happens is behind closed doors, man are meeting up in garages oh, yeah. and swinging. I can tell you, I have on great authority, not good authority. Let's add five letters, why I have four. I have on great authority, that's the G word, that Chris Brown is swinging, man. <laughs> Punching up, man. On great authority is that Chris Brown is outside swinging, man. And when I hear you on smoke with me, I hear that passion. I heard the passion that he definitely wants to fight still. He wants to beat man up. Bro. And the, and Quavo doesn't sound like that. Quavo doesn't, Quavo sound, doesn't like sound like he's scared though, but I think Quavo's not going to have a one-on-one with him. He, I think I think Quavo knows that when we roll up and we see each other, I'm going to yeah. be in my dons. Whereas Chris Brown is on a vibe of, I'm definitely on this one-on-one thing. On my, uh, if I put, all right, money down right now. Bag, one bag, who's your money on? Quavo or Chris Brown? What, on a one-on-one? Yeah. I'm going for Chris Brown. He's Chris gonna, Breezy is thumping him up. He's going to give him one forward flip and take off his bottom lip. That's why he's not really saying much apart from you want smoke. Like, let's just fight. His whole energy, Chucky's right. It's just aggression. Just yeah. Up. But that's yeah, he, why he lost this clash. If you listen to Quavo, Quavo the execution yeah. bar for bar, Quavo might have killed him. Yeah, I'm with you on that, to be honest Quavo with you. might have killed him. I'm going to go home and listen to it again today. But when I heard take off, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, his ad lib. Oh, his ad lib. You know what? That's what kills him as well. That's what kills him. The ad libs, brother. Bro, they're crazy. They're crazy. Uh, How can a man dop your man with ad libs? Auntie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, nah. but you don't. I call your whole. When I say the song is a banger. Yeah, it's I shout out to Quavo and shout out to Drake for making two songs that can live and exist in the club. I like the fact that they're just like straight away as well. These men are straight away. One man fling out something, the next, next man, man fling out something. Yeah. Oh yeah, and bars wise, I'm very happy with Drake's last diss track. Yeah, yeah. I and like how serious it is and just, that's all I wanted. He can carry on now. I don't Do you know what I like what Drake said on there as well where he said something about, um, you know, 
it almost alluding to the fact that you're like you're throwing stones and hiding your hand. He's like, no, we're gonna resolve this today. And then he's alluding to the fact that you can't release no music because Taylor Swift said no. no. Let me tell you something, Drake. I'm loving what you're doing. Can right I now. say this is what I love? Let me tell you this, yeah, I Drake. I not- love it. Kendrick, come out, bro. This stinks right now. He's got to come outside. This stinks. He's got to come outside. But I tell you what, he come outside when you're ready to come outside. Cool. But I tell you what I won't love, if I'm being honest, yeah, is if it's true that he's trying to finish off the album and put the diss on the album and all of that, I don't like that. Why? Uh, Bro, come outside. You wanted Mm. my man to do... Let's not package it and do all of that. Mm. Come outside and do what you need to do with my man. Why was Nas allowed to do that? Nine months after, it's a pregnancy. On the album, Stillmatic. None of us say anything. Do, do you know why? I guess the reason why it got a is because the thing was just crazy. The thing was just crazy. But, but, but you had nine months. But, so if this thing's crazy nine months from now, no homo. No, the, yeah, no, no one's going to say nothing. If cool. this thing's not, if nine months later it comes out and it, the album comes out and this thing's crazy, we don't care. then no one's going to care. Everyone's going to come out and I'm not going to care either. But I'm just saying, ultimately, you know what, right now, in the way that this sport is as well, the way that the things are, we need you to come out. You wanted my man to come outside. He's outside now. Take the gloves off. You're saying as well, yeah, this is the next thing. This is one of the reasons why I work, and I think it's quite different too, actually, yeah? Yeah. One of the reasons why I won't love it is because what it seems as though is Kendrick doesn't really love what Drake stands for and what he is and all of these type of things, yeah? Mm. Cool. And naturally, he thinks he's better than him too. Probably, yeah. So, in that case, it's almost a lightly counterproductive in my mind, where it's like, I don't even really rate this guy, but I'm going to seize the opportunity because he's such a big superstar. I'm going to package my album around it so it gets a big attraction. No, you're good enough to go outside and let him know what time it is. Do that, wrap up the album when it's ready, come and give it to us. For me, you don't need to use my man's bus to sell stuff. You're Kendrick Lamar. Believe in that and deal with that. For me. It'd be interesting to hear his perspective on why he is taking so long. Because apparently Joe Budden said it better times. There's a song there. So I don't get it. There's something there. It's meant to be lit. Ignorantly. I don't have the information. Maybe when it comes out. We privately talked about it on the phone. And I think me and you, yeah, where when we was talking the other day and I was saying that, and I know that people are kind of saying this lightly now, but maybe there is a possibility where he's saying to himself, I didn't realise that in me doing this, Everyone wants a bit of a slice of this. Oh, Whereas I disagree. I need. I disagree. Okay, maybe I need him outside on my own. I don't want to click up. I'm not trying to. He mentioned that before. I don't like this clicking up stuff. Well, okay, cool. Um, what's his name? Uh, Kanye West is outside talking about. I got you, bro. Bro, piss off, bro. Oh, that go Kanye. Away. Is, oh, go away, bro. Kanye, go man. away. Is that the next thing? It's like, okay, cool. Look, yes, I understand. And I love Kanye by up, the way, and I love Kanye too. But it's like. Big man, I could hear a man saying, bro, you're mashing up my thing, bro. Kanye, step aside. Now nah, I'm going to leave it for a little bit because now it's looking like you're going at him, this one's going at him, that one's going at him. And I get it, he was on a project where Bear Man was kind of going at Drake, innit, yeah? But still, this is a little bit different now. Everyone's trying to make the direct shot and he's going to come out, contradict himself lightly and make the direct shot too. No, let make, let's make this thing quiet now because everyone's outside. Everyone wants to have their little bit, bit and pieces, bits and pieces. Once it's, the dust has settled a little bit and everyone said what they need to say, Drake, I'm in that field in Labrick Grove right now. Come link me there. Do you know what though? I, I kind of don't rate that though. The more I'm thinking about it, I kind of don't rate it. I do. I don't rate it because you've come out and Kendrick, I love Kendrick. You've come out, you've done all of this stuff. And I tried to find an excuse for Kendrick last time round when I'm saying it was a bit of a sassy response. If someone was sassy with me, I can't promise I will respond. You the next respond, respond, respond. Donnie brought out Snoop, Tupac, and then spoke to you on some like, my guy, I, I'm not even, he even said in a song, I, can't, I want to paraphrase here, obviously, I can't remember the bar, but he was basically saying, I'm aware of everyone else sending for me, but I'm going to give them a little bit of a rest right now. I'm focusing on you. So even Drake is telling the Rick Rosses and yeah, everybody gonna... else, don't worry, I'm going to talk to you lot in a second. But right now, everybody wanted this as the main event. Well, I'm here, my nigga. And you're not here. After you made such a kerfuffle about it and I was backing you. K-Dot, you need to but step that's, outside. But listen, bro. let me tell you something. I you agree with outside. that. My point is, I want him outside. He ASAP. I but at the same see, time, I can a see thing. why a man might say, I was ready to go outside, but it's like everyone's taking these little shots at him and all of this, yeah. I don't want no excuses. 
I don't. That's want an him, excuse. Though. I don't want. Huh? That's an excuse, though. For what you just said, that's an excuse. Potentially, You're right. potentially. How can I want this all by myself, but I release it as a verse on someone else's project? Then I clearly don't want this all for myself. Furthermore, when I think about it, Kendrick, when have you actually done that dedicated song? You've done a BET cipher where you've gone at my man. You've jumped at my man on Big Sean's song. You've jumped at my man on this song. Like, you never just do it off your but own the, back. I hear that, but this is the opportunity to do it off his own back now. And now, if Drake has actually come outside, yeah. there's still everyone else that is doing their little bits and pieces. Yeah. I'm not saying I necessarily agree with it, but I can understand why a man might say, all right, I was ready to kick his head off. But Rick Ross has come outside and said more. More people are saying some stuff. Then now also Kanye is on this thing of like me and you are friends. Big man, I rate your ting in that, yeah, but we're not cool like that. All right, cool, go and get your ting off. Mm. Everyone, uh, what you lot have said what you needed to say? I'm oh, here Everyone's now. done? What, not? Everyone's yeah. done? Cool, no excuses. Lambert Grove, there's a park there. Now, let's go there and let's go and see what happens. And Drake's ready for it. Oh, Drake's going to win. He's ready for it. He's ready for it. You can keep shaking your head. The only person that I think he might have a problem with right now. I know you got to go. Poet has killed me today. <laughs> it's Rick Ross. I'm sorry, I know, I know. Can I say that again? It's Ross. What about him? Because he hasn't addressed certain things Ross has said. And that's what you've got to do in a clash. He's going to address. Remember what Drake said. Give me a second. Give me I'm a second. Back. Just give me a second. But he, th- he wants me. He wants me. I'm, and I'm hearing he wants the Labrick Grove Park. I'm ready for that. Let me just train for that. Let me I, just train for that. I feel like he's doing that on a, you know, for a Let reason. Let me train for that. And then once I've got that out of the way, let me tell you something here. Yeah? I will say this. If he does win this thing against Kendrick, yeah, and he does come back and he, he like, individually addresses everybody in the coldest way, do you know how much this is going to... Do you know how gangster this is going to make him look? Proper. I think Rick Ross will beat him. More I'll stick to it. But I think he's going to beat Kendrick. And everyone's going to go point your chat and rubbish. And maybe I am, but Rick Ross addressed some things outside of music that he's choosing to ignore. He just wanted to pay attention to the nose and something else. But when a man's talking about the, the letter... It's too big of a thing to just... Address. I told you that on the phone, bro. I did. don't think... I, I don't know if this is the case, but I just think if you are going to address it, you have to address it properly. You can't address it flippantly. 100%. Because Rick Ross's one was that a little bit like culturally, you might have issues. Yeah, yeah. I'm not saying Stacey ain't still going to like you. But Winston might have his reservations. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, uh, there's you no go. howlers today. I've got, I've got, yeah, why yeah. did you want to everyone, do it? I've got, I've got, no, I've got. everyone, I'm going to go. No howlers. But the good thing in life is I was here late looking tired. <laughs> Thanks for listening, everyone. Yeah.